Hey, hi, Sally Franz again with Scrambled Legs, a snarky tale of Hospital Hooey. You can get me on Amazon, Scrambled Legs, a snarky tale. This is a chapter called Suspended Animation. Up and at em is never a good way to start the day for me. I personally prefer the smell of a strong Argentine coffee in my nostrils, a tray with a dew-covered peace rose in a Waterford vase, a fresh croissant, which should come with red raspberry jam and butter. Up and at em, up and at this! Oh, please, it's like 6.30 in the morning, and I'm either going to have to use a lot more morphine to become comatose when you people visit, or just rise up and be healed. Facing me, up and at em, was the virginal white, perkiest little gal I'd seen since Jessie at Toy Story 2. She had white blonde hair and tight little braids. Her dimples screamed Copenhagen from miles away. But she did not have coffee or jam, croissant. She didn't even have a salting cracker. What she had was two big, no low, massive thugs in scrubs with her and a machine that would make the Marquis de Sade salivate. It had chains and gears and straps. We're taking a little walk, she chirped. What be this wee kimosabi? Can I at least get a few clothes on? Oh, sure, and then we're going to get right around the block. I swear she was talking an octave high. Snow White would have been proud. With much effort and grunting and latching into and onto Mr. Machine, they started hoisting me into thin air. It was the Spanish Inquisition on wheels. There were straps everywhere, up my crotch, around my waist, across my shoulders, there were leg cuffs on my ankles. I stood vertically, if you can call it standing. Clearly, I was a vi vision of temptation, all decked out in a Borg suit, if only I could find an available erector set to date. And just for the record, women who scream in pain are not having fun. Karina and the henchmen wheeled me dangling to the center of the hallway. They lowered my feet so that I was just barely touching flat-footed. Touching the carpet felt like being lowered into an explosion in a thumb uh, tack factory. Remember, I was in excruciating pain on every inch of my skin from the waist down. Do I look like Houdini? Can I just make myself walk? Read the chart, Bart. I'm paralyzed. Then the contra contraption started moving. My toes were dragging along the carpet, making me want to burst out into song. Acid drop on toesies, scratching like kittens, boiling hot kettles, and nails shorn to splinters. Raw meat tied tightly with colorful strings. These are a few of the joys that you bring. Just get the feel of it, she said. I'm pretty sure I got the feel of it. It feels like an uncut version of Pulp Fiction. It gets easier as you practice. I'm sorry, we're all out of miracles here on aisle 12. Let's take the person back to her room. That's right, move your feet. The feet in question, my feet, were now being dragged behind me and sandpapered down by the Brillo industrial strength carpeting on the floor in the hospital. And although I could not feel pressure anywhere on my legs, I could feel that abrasion on my skin about a hundred times more than the average bear. Oh yes, Yogi Bear, I had boo-boos to show for it. I started channeling Peach the starfish from Finding Nemo. Find a happy place. Find a happy place. Find a happy place. The only semblance of my feet moving was the guy in back, kind of swaying me from left and right on the chains. <laughs> Great. Keep reaching for the floor. Stellar quote. May I use that for my next motivational speech? Reach for the floor. All the while, I was sort of smiling, well, sort of biting my lips so I wouldn't scream. Good job, she said. Where have I heard that phrase before? Oh yeah, when you're potty training someone. Just relax those muscles, you Scandinavian witch. How am I supposed to tell deaf muscles to relax? And if I could, would I? Let's see, so my toes and my entire foot could be closer to that carpet and feel all of that? Let me guess, you were the kid on a class trip that offered anyone a Twinkie if they'd put their hand in the bear cage for 10 seconds. Way to go, they all yelled together as I cleared the first corner. Apparently, I was in some kind of GIMP Olympics, and they were testing me and timing me. As Stuart Little would say, where's the silver lining? Ah, no more 40 bucks for pedicures. 
and as I was only 12 doors away finally from my room, the nice job and the good job and the nice work dwindled to just a little more to go. And then as she unstrapped me and repositioned me back to bed, she said, good effort. We'll try again tomorrow when you aren't so tired. Huh? That's right, true to form. It's the patient's fault once again.